that she's talking about. That way we can see it. Now it's, it's real yeah. life. It's on the record. The streak is in very good hands. You see what I'm talking about? So he's an idiot or a liar. Or all the other terrible things you guys okay, said. Lone, um, with him, porque no, no los dos. Except for Drew and Dijak, they are killing you right now. <laughs> the cock casualty of it all. <laughs> Mike says drop the you. mic. Y'all killed it. All right. Um, let's have some fun for the last little bit. I got some stuff set aside for us. Um, I eloquently named um, this. Where'd it go? I lost my thing. Oh. Questions from the peanut gallery. Um, I always send it out to a bunch of friends and stuff. I want to see what has people pissed off for greatness this week. Um, this one comes from Kai Tai, the uh, the host of the Smack Raw podcast. He says, Nia Jax keeps doing the my whole spot, but hasn't yelled my whole yet. Um, what you think? <laughs> she knows what her wheelhouse is. She knows what got her popular. <laughs> That's her claim to fame. Is she saving it for WrestleMania for a big spot? That could be it, it, dude. Is that what we're doing? We're saving it for WrestleMania? Ever. (laughs) I love Bridget. Not the prayer hands with six, period. Not the prayer hands. It's just the way it is. Multiple ellipses really gets the point across. This one comes from the warden, Matt Ritter, the host of the number one podcast on Pornhub. The tag match doesn't need to close night one. Tickets are already sold, and the match placement doesn't matter. People watch Mania the same way they watch the Super Bowl for the spectacle. Um, I've long stood on the fact that the women should main event one night who win the Rumble, and the men who win the Rumble should main event the other. But, you know. To be fair, I to be fair. don't super care because they haven't really done a great job. I don't really care about Bailey versus EO. Like, I just don't. Just don't care. Did they start the build too late? I think that I just don't care. <laughs> Honestly, what don't you care about? I really don't care about Bailey. And I don't care about this story, like, in the slightest. I would much rather see, like, a bigger story for Rhea. Rhea's belt, then I would this one. A bunch of people are with you, Al. Uh, Bridget Bailey. says she doesn't either, and she knows nothing. Uh, Mike's with you. Uh, Scout says they did it too early, then got away from it, and now trying to come back to it, I guess. Um, she literally nothing. Zero things. I just don't care about <laughs> Bailey. Just don't Bailey care. is the best four horsewomen out of all four horsewomen. Bailey's story has been from NXT to now. It's not just like the last six months or the last year on SmackDown. It's the fact that she has just now been getting a WrestleMania main event when the rest of the four horsewomen have. It's the fact that it's her not getting pushed along with EO for the promotional things, for Vegas, for the posters for Mania. That's what Bailey's storyline is. It's the continuous just injustice for her and her and EO having to fight and claw when both of these women have worked the world over for a match and a storyline with Rhea Ripley and Becky that really didn't kind of start jumping till right before Elimination Chamber. So the fact that Bailey is the winner of the Royal Rumble, the longest the longest um, contestant in the Royal Rumble for the women, and the fact that she is still getting undersold, that is what I feel like Bailey's storyline is. Is that when even she's is like even when she's almost at the top, that she still has to work twice as hard as everyone else, because she's been completely undersold her entire career. She's loved. They loved her backstage. All the superstars love working with her. She's going to end up being a suit like Molly Holly is in the next five to 10 years. So for me, it's her storyline over Rhea and Becky particularly, because it's going to show what I, what like most of us have known all along is that Becky Bailey's the best one on promo. Bailey's the best one in ring because she's the only one that's shown continuous growth with both. In comparison to Charlotte, who's great in ring, she's not good on the mic. Be- Becky's half and half. Sasha's a bump, a bump doll. Sasha's a crash dummy. Sasha is Dolph Ziggler. She can do a real good Scorpion. She has a decent promo. Her theme songs are terrible, but that's really it. <laughs> Bailey is the best one out of the four, and I really hope that they finally give her her flowers this year when she's hot. Instead of doing the same thing that they've done with everyone else, where they give it to her as an apology thing 10 years later. 
I don't necessarily think it should be Rhea and Becky. I think that they should have given the moment to Nia, honestly, because mm-hmm. she's worked really hard and they have a story, you know, a bigger story, in my opinion, like longer term um, than I don't care about Becky and Rhea. I would much rather see Nia in that spot. But I don't know. I'm just not a huge Bailey fan. Just not. I don't really super care for her. And that's just, I mean, it's just my opinion. So, like, yeah. I just literally give no fucks about this match. Like, oh, yeah. fucks given zero. Fucks given zero. Like, I just and don't. That's okay. I just don't care. Like, she's, she's I guess, good at what she does. I, I particularly have never been super impressed by her. I think she's just kind of cool. Like you're there. Like she's not to me. She's not bad. She's not great. She's just she goes up there and she does her job and that's fine. But like I just I don't particularly like gravitate towards her. She's not your yeah. she's not your flavor of. Kool-Aid. She's not my flavor of Kool Aid. She's not spunky enough for me. I don't know her voice. Her voice just annoys me. It might be because like I can't stand the cackle for other reasons but like i have this friend that like she has this horrendous like cackle <laughs> laugh and it drives me <laughs> so just right back to the trauma it's all trauma responses it's all trauma and I just, so and and look we both disagreed and we were able to not like fight each other because oh my god it's so fans. crazy oh my god yeah this one has nothing to do with wrestling guys <laughs> the new roadhouse movie fucking sucks and i'm gonna bring this back up because metal mike says off wrestling topic watching the new roadhouse movie last night it was really good has anybody on this panel seen the new roadhouse i'm only a fan of the old roadhouse i'm a patrick swayze girl to the day i die (laughs) not everything needs a remake that's all i'm saying mike says he loved it Mm -hmm. Eh, i just don't think a remake needed to happen that's just my opinion on it but what do you think i know you don't like the uh the new raven the new crow. Quote the Raven, never you more. Mother. I was you thinking about the Raven. The Raven, yeah. I did. I was also confused. We will have a discussion later, sir. I know. You might have just reached John territory. So Bridget didn't even realize it was a uh I may have reached John territory. All right. But um I don't think it was a remake. I think it was a reimagination. Same character Re-imagine. names. Quote the Raven Nevermore. A mid football team from Baltimore. <laughs> no, neither of them. I'm at the crow. I'm just again the mantra of tonight. Hi. Um, this one is wrestling related. This comes from uh Silverback Nate Slater. Um, AOP and Braun are gimmick infringing on King Kong. <laughs> and in real news, The Rock stole the final boss from Ryan Davidson. Um I think the I think the Rock. The night he said the final boss statement, I said he said that after Sasha came out and said, "I'm the boss, I'm the CEO, or whatever." Like I'm the yeah. final boss, so he like had to one upper. I could see that, but the IWC being the IWC found a million other references where the term "the final boss" has come up and been like, "This motherfucker's still in other people's stuff." So I don't disagree with Nate in that one. You guys I mean, got anything to say about The Rock? It's 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 not it's not surprising. The Rock seems like the type to you know like scroll through dirt sheets and look at like what the young hot town are doing and just be like, well they're low enough on the card where like no one's really going to be paying attention to the fact that I took their gimmick, so I'm just going to do it. I, That's not I, surprising I, either. <laughs> I you. do have something to say about The Rock. Fuck The Rock. Fuck The Rock. Pat, I love you. You're a handsome gentleman. You have your your silver tongued wordsmith, and I love everything about you as a human being. Um, that's his sniffly writer Gwartz. What's his not Gwartz? How do you fucking pronounce his last name? I can't ever remember. Hey, Brian is the guy who used to write for Gwartz. WWE. Was, yeah, Gwartz. Um, last one. Cam says. If you shave everything and leave the goatee, you'd look like Tyson Tomko. Um, Okay. I looked it up, and I was like, there's no way. I don't look anything like Tom. No. Tomko and I look nothing alike. Not even close. 
That's pushing it. That's pushing, That's pushing it. it. Yeah. That's pushing it like a country mile. Yeah. <laughs> Just because we're white and have facial hair does not mean we look alike. <laughs> I know Tyson. Do you? Yeah, he's from Jacksonville. He worked at the Gold Club. His name's Travis. No, of course you know him. He's a Duval boy. <laughs> no one believed him when he said he was going to be a wrestler, though. <laughs> we really? All made fun of him. Everyone made fun of him. Oh, he was crazy. All right. I'll show you. Uh, show you yeah. We're going to play wrestling this or that in the post show. So you guys got to stick around for a few minutes and do that. Uh, but Chrissy, you made it this all, you made it all the way. Your first episodes on the books. Um, this is the important part because we finally shut the hell up. You get to plug everything you do. Tell everybody where to find you. What's new and exciting in your world. All right. Thank you so much for having me here, babies. I really appreciate it. My name is Chrissy Tina. Chrissy Tina across all social media platforms. You can find me on podcasts like Hot Take Wrestling Podcast, where I work with one of my dear friends, Joe. You can find me on Was That In Good Taste, where drinking is not required, but it is recommended, where we go through everyday topics and alcohol is always usually at the center of them. Um, and then there's my personal podcast with my best friend, James, where it is wrestling with friends because the only mommy issue I want to work through myself is mommy issues that have to deal with Rhea Ripley. And then I have NXT Rewind where I work with amazing creators like the Well Gray, like a Richie Mars, like a pro wrestling wizard, where we watch NXT takeovers to kind of get over our you know traumas because wrestling is great, but it's always better with friends. And thank you guys for having me on tonight. Allison, your ears are super cute. And my ADHD has been running wild the entire night because of the lights. Thank and they're you. so good. Both. I love you, James. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm here. Um, you can find me here every Sunday for about spots and chair shots. Uh, Wednesdays for us talk Wolf Pack. Saturdays for Boyfriend Times. Nerdy News at 420 here on River City Radio. Best thing to do is follow me on Twitter, Jacksbo2020. Hit the link tree, find all my shenanigans and my merch. What's up, Pat? Thank you, Bo. What's I'm up, sorry. Pat? I didn't mean to do that right at the end. You're good. You're fine. I always say hi to new people and they pop up. Al, you're up. You can find me on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter at just a girl 918 uh, We are going to be having a new... Um, episode of the heel support group uh that will drop this week exclusively on the patreon uh when uh, mr greg will tell you of those things mm. clear my throat get ready to do this spill i'm gonna see how long it takes me to get through it all a minute 29 seconds i'm gonna wait till it hits 130 and then i'm gonna start so i got five seconds oh. <clears throat> ready set so, ladies and gentlemen, starting on April 27th, I'm going to jump back on the horse. I'm going to be running in the Rock and Roll Marathon here in Nashville, Tennessee. If you want to get in on the action and donate to the team, you can send money to PayPal, BotchBox, or Venmo at Allison Dash Siegel. Both of those destinations will take those donations. And after the race, we're making a big lump sum donation to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society because fuck cancer. It almost killed me, so I'm going to go run real far and, uh, you know, do the damn thing. So donate money if you can. If you can't, like and share and do all the things. Go to my Instagram. Go to my TikTok. Go to my Twitter. You'll see the video there. Uh, like and share it. Um, remember to follow us anywhere you do anything on the internet. Uh, like, follow, subscribe. Facebook, Instagram, iHeartRadio, Twitter, Spotify. Literally, you have all the out. If you check in the Discord link below, that is your direct line to the Botch Bots and Share Shots host and personalities and producers and everybody there. Right below that is the Botch Bots and Share Shots and Off the Top Media merch link for my spread shirt. You get all your hats, all your t-shirts, fanny packs. If I can get a pair of shorts with Bo's face on them, I don't give a shit. Just go order it. Most importantly for us is your Amazon Prime subscription. Remember that with Prime, you get a Prime gaming subscription. You can give it to any of your Twitch friends. That's us, the Wolfpack Creation World. That's any of Chrissy's friends. That's any of us. Give it to anyone because Jeff Bezos has too much money. Um, Patreon.com is the lifeblood of the network, though. Patreon.com slash Rivet City Radio. You get ad-free playback of all the shows within 24 hours. You get the Up and Smoke Cinema Club watch-along. We're about to go 
watch Wonka and get real stoned. Um, tons of fun for that. You get all the ads and articles. You get the delicious as fuck cookbook. You get all the sweet, sweet Patreon exclusive stuff. We're about to do some wrestling, this or that. You guys got anything for the class before I talk real fast? Uh, someone asked where they can find me. You can find me on TikTok, Instagram, any, anything. It's all Chrissy Tina. It's all the same thing everywhere. There you have it. Bo? No, I'll wait for you, sir. But... Now, as we close another episode of Box Watch and Share Shots, I'm taking a minute. Thank you for listening. I remind you to go wherever you do anything on the internet and like, follow, subscribe, unsubscribe, and then subscribe again. Leave a comment telling me that you're tired of us rickrolling because I don't give a fuck. It's my show. Or that Chrissy was fucking amazing. She's probably going to come back on. Um, either way, it helps the algorithm and helps find new listeners. If you're feeling really generous and be one of the VIP people, head over to patreon.com and over to the Rivet City Radio Podcast Network. You get some fantastic swag. We get some fantastic guests. It's a win win for. Chrissy Tina for everybody's favorite Ginger Ninja Jacksville and the boss bitch Al. I am the Will Gray. Thanks for stopping by and listening, my people. <laughs>